Uh, we will kind of wait for folks to shuffle in and find their seats. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, we are on tight time. So I'm just going to cut in. Everybody's got their beverages. I hope everyone at home does too. And I hope you're hungry. Um, so my name is Caitlin and I am the events coordinator at Square Books. We're so glad that you could all join us this evening in celebration of Come On Over, Elizabeth High School's newest cookbook. A little more about um, Elizabeth. She's a Mississippi cook and caterer, founder of the debutante farmer Bloody Mary Mix, regular Today Show contributor and author of What Can I Bring? The Southern Living Party Cookbook. And as of today, happy pub day come on over southern delicious for every occasion she is joined in conversation uh by with by heather mcmahon she's an actress comedian and perhaps most importantly an Ole Miss alum and she is joining yes. us from atlanta so um before i go away though i do want to thank everybody for um supporting saint jude and Elizabeth and Square Books. It means so, so much to us all and y'all are in for a real treat. Uh, be sure to stick around because at the very end, I'm gonna do the raffle to see who wins the um, chef's dinner. Um, okay, y'all have fun. See you soon. Can you hear me? Hello, hello, Miss Hi, Heather. Heather. How, how are you? Are you? Girl, you look great. The hot pink, you're crushing it. Like you are thriving. Well, I mean, I put my eyelashes on just for you. I mean, I had to do it. And um, they're like all stuck up in my bottom eyelashes, but I'm doing the best I can. Just, you know, trying to be you. I'm so glad we were able to drag you out of your basement. I know, I, girl, I've been in a wormhole. I'm trying to finish my script, but you just did, listen. I was going through this book. Now, you know, my mom's from Boston. You met her, we met, you know, just a little backstory. We met your mama. She's nuts, but we love her. But the funny thing is, is that she has always wanted to learn how to make like really wonderful, sophisticated, but also attainable Southern food. That was my biggest, my late father was always like, why can't you make deviled eggs? She's like, I'm from Boston. I don't know how to do that. So literally we were going through your cookbook today. It's so beautiful. Congratulations. I'm just like, this is insane. I've already like picked some of my highlights. I just need you to know, wait, hold on. What was it? Um, hold on. Uh, this fireside dip. Which just says, oh, you just stop right now. Like, I, my now, mind is blown. You can't, you can't pull that out though until winter. That oh, you're right. winter meal, it was what my grandmother always served at her house in the wintertime. And okay. the problem is, though, is that now that this book has come out, the canned tamales are going to be a little tough to find because right. now everybody <laughs> wants to make the dip. But I'm telling you, it's the finest thing you have ever had in your life. I mean, you're just not even gonna believe it. But now the, the deviled egg recipe, mm -hmm. if your mama can't get this right, then the, there is no hope. It's that, so simple, it's so good. I yeah. know your mama can do this and I wish your daddy was here to taste them. Listen, the cornbread salad too. I said, this is what I love about Mississippi. Now for those of you, those people who tuned in and don't know, I'm from Atlanta, I live in Atlanta now. I went to Ole Miss and Ole Miss for me was even culture shock. Even me and then like a Georgia Southern girl, when I got there, I was like, y'all put ranch on everything. And when I opened, I literally opened the cornbread salad. I was like, yes, the first thing is the ranch. <laughs> I mean, when we, when I grew up in the Delta, I mean, literally you went into any restaurant and yeah. the first thing you heard was, yeah, I'll have the ranch. Do y'all have ranch dressing? <laughs> yeah. okay, I want the ranch, but I want the ranch on the side. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, there's a time and a place for ranch dressing. It's not every time you have a salad. Right. I'll be damned. It is definitely when you're going to make that cornbread layered salad. It is something special. It looks it's insane. Like, that's at the top of my list. I'm going to do the deviled eggs. And then I want to do the lemon spritzers, which is that, do you have the ingredients for that today? What are we making? That's, okay. That's what we're going to do. Okay. So I've got two recipes. The thing is, I understand you are so busy. But there is mm -hmm. no reason in the world that, you, and you do, you have friends over all the time. And all I think, time. you know, the, the good news is, is that right now, people have been locked up for a year in yeah. their house. So literally, you can invite them over and say, okay, we're going to have a party in my pantry. I'm going to throw out some half stale nuts and a <laughs> bottle of half, like, lukewarm bourbon. And they're going to be like, oh my God. I mean, that Elizabeth High School, she is fan. That was the best party. Best party. So the book yeah. is so low, you don't right. have to do anything to entertain right. people right now. So this is your time. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. out of the, I mean, you can even entertain them in the damn basement. <laughs> in the basement. 
So this is my favorite. So what we okay. do is we start with a little bit of Prosecco. Love it. And these fabulous glasses. I mean, three ingredients, and that's what we like. A little bit of limoncello. Which I love because I'm Italian. Here for okay. it. Yeah. Of course, of course. And you were supposed to be getting married in Italy, but that will happen. Are you going to honeymoon in Italy? Yeah, well, we pushed the wedding again another year. At this point, I'm like, I need a whole another year to get thin. You know what I mean? I put on 40 pounds or go. Okay, 34, 34 pounds. But the good news is I have a diet chapter. Do you see that little I diet? saw it. I saw it. Listen, you've got some green juice in there. I can make it. It has kale. It's got apples. I can do it. Add a little vodka oh to it. Nobody needs to know. I love the diet more than anything. The first yeah. week, I mean, all the hope and the promise, like I'm all <laughs> In. Do you understand? Yeah. Me? There is no diet that I haven't been on. At one point, I was on the bone broth diet. You know what I'm talking about? Girl, I know what you're talking about. Bone broth. Well, the guy at the meat market was so concerned about me that he called Luke, my husband. He was like, um, listen, Lesma keeps coming over here and buying like bags of bones. Is she in a satanic cult? Like, I'm Because <laughs> that's what I was doing. But it only, and he was like, look, She's on a diet. It'll last yeah. two weeks and yeah. she'll, be, she'll be back on it. Okay, yep. so we have Prosecco. We have limoncello. And guess what? We're going to do a little sorbet. Oh, yes. Why not? Okay. Why not? We're going to do it right there. Yep. yep. There we go. Maybe. That looks refreshing. I mean, look at how much fun that is. And that that is a great drink if you have friends over, baby shower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shower, whatever. Now, this is one that I'm obsessed with. Okay. Did you did you grow up eating artichokes? In yes, let me tell you. My grandmother, who's very Southern from Arkansas, she sent me to this thing called Miss Manners. And it was behind the rug department at Perimeter Mall in Atlanta. And the one thing that they taught us, we had to, we had to learn how to walk, I swear to God, with books on our head. We wore the white gloves and they taught us how to eat steamed artichokes. I was like six and a half. I'm like, my mom was, from, was like, why are you doing this? I'm like, mom, it's Southern. We have to learn how to do it. Yeah. That was the one thing we learned was artichokes. How to peel and like delicately eat the artichoke. Yeah. Okay, I have, okay well then this is perfect for you. So this right. is what we're gonna do. So we have our wheel of brie and we're just yeah. gonna cut the top off of it. Okay. Now, I have already cooked these artichokes. So they are completely cooked. We do it with a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of mint for no reason because supposedly it stops them from turning brown but they're going to turn brown anyway so that's it right but then you take your brie and this is kind of fun you know you just like like play-doh and inside each leaf you put the brie in Stop. you keep going and then oh. once it's all done you put this artichoke in the microwave for uh -huh. about three minutes and melt that brie you thought the butter was good when you were eight years old up yeah. at manners i got something to show miss manners let me tell you i mean look at this so then you put it all in there. Keep okay. It. I mean, you could do this literally in five minutes at your house, right before your guests come over, and they are going to lose their minds. How do you how do you cook the artichoke in the first place? Are you steaming it? Okay. So what you're going to do? Yes. Yeah, so I yeah. cut the end off, and then we're going to put it in the water just like this, sitting up. Now, okay. if it's too long, it's going to be cattywampus. Right. You need for it to cook evenly. So put it in the water, boil it, or boil it. <laughs> until you can pull one of these yeah. out from the center okay that's okay. when you know it's done if you pull one out from the outside that's not a good test you want one on the inside pull okay it out, let it cool add the brie throw it in the microwave for five minutes right before your guests get there this is the best addition to a charcuterie platter besides my pimento cheese which i do yeah. think kind of are a little partial to, right? I am. You sent me home for a six hour car drive back to Atlanta with the Bloody Mary mix, which I wasn't driving, but the Bloody Mary mix and the pimento cheese. And I was like, I, how did I consume 3000 calories before I even got to the Alabama state line? But I did it. I was just whooping it down. I'm telling you, it's good stuff. So, so there's good. other things. So you put this on a charcuterie platter, little yeah. prosciutto, little salami, little, some more Italian stuff. Yeah, that you yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it, sister. I mean, seriously. So easy. 
Well, and I love you. I love this idea too, like with your book. And and listen, like I'm, you know, I I I legally got married at the courthouse, and I do feel like now that I'm married, like there's a different sense of like, okay, I've got this Italian guy, and I gotta get take care of him. But it's so interesting because you know he'll have his buddies over after golf, and it's like I want to feel like a good host. I love to entertain. I want people around my kitchen island. So like being able to pull these things together and then like impress folks is such a big deal to me. And and make it look easy. That's the yeah. deal. Is that I, if you are in that kitchen. And you're sweating and you're cussing yeah. and you're like, oh my God, like yeah. I'm exhausted. I mean, I've been working for five hours on this beef burger and nobody even appreciates it. That's no fun for anybody. Right. It's effortless. Like you just walk in, you know, you pull out your china, you pull out your crystal, you pull out all the things that you love. I mean, right. this is the deal. This book celebrates a weeknight. Because let me I tell love you, it. there are a hell of a lot more Mondays in this world than there are New Year's Eves. That's and a good point. if you point. didn't learn anything during COVID, you learned that we need to, nothing's promised. I mean, right. you and I were drinking at City Grocery without a care in the world in February. And March, that shit was shut down. Yeah, I mean, it, it was. was. Shut down. Yeah. And, and I mean, seriously, we never saw that coming. It's like, you know, my great grandmother, who I adore, George, her best friend, her name was Patsy. She was 98 years old. And we would go visit Patsy. Great grandmother and I would go and visit. And she had plastic, it was this thick, mm -hmm. on every piece of furniture in her house. Can't sit on it. Oh, uh -huh. 106 degrees. I would sit down in my little shorts and my legs, when I stood up, they would stick to it. I mean, like, took 15 minutes for me to get that. I mean, yeah. like, and then. I got in the car and I'll never forget. It. I was eight years old and I and I realized this. And I said, Grandmama, what's Patsy waiting on? And she right. said, What are you talking about? And I said, When's she gonna take that plastic off her furniture? Enjoy her furniture. Right. You see what I'm saying? Patsy died with that plastic on her furniture. Of she course she did. Dead. She yep. never sat on that beautiful velvet sofa. Never. Now, the people that bought it at the state sale, I pray to God they took the plastic off and they're enjoying it somewhere in the <laughs> I can right. only hope. But do you see what I'm saying? Like, I mean, how Absolutely. do you think about it? Think about the things that your mom pulls out at Christmas. Right. And think about how happy that makes her and you. Why not just get a wild hair and pull it out on a Thursday night? It's interesting because since I like, I was living in New York and I moved home during COVID and literally like picked up my life and moved back to Atlanta, you know, my Jeff and I are like, all right, we, you know, I think the last year, everybody's kind of had this collective, like, oh shit moment to themselves. Like what's important? What do I need to prioritize? Yeah. And I went home and I realized that that was important to like be close to my mom and my sister and, you know, connect with the South. And it's been interesting. We would make these like little dinner parties. You know, we had our little bubble, our little group, our pod, if you will. And we would try and do these. Yeah, my little pod. And we, with my godmother, Angela, who's from the, um, from Philadelphia, Mississippi. Who I'm at. Who I'm yeah. at. Who, who you met is crazy and a good time. And we would try and have these little nights where we would just make these dinner parties, just like, you know, the eight of us and, and really enjoy it. And I think that's what's so cool about everything you make. Like I said, it was like, it's accessible. It's it's easy to do, but it's like, like you said, pulling out that China. Why do I have three sets of China from my mom's wedding, my two grandmother's wedding, if I'm not using it? Why are we drinking out of the cheap shit, you know? It, exactly, Heather, that's what I'm trying yeah. to explain to you. Enjoy it. Think about the happiness and satisfaction you get of pulling those beautiful things out. If it's a Monday, you know, go outside, pick some right. flowers out of your yard or go to the neighbor's yard. They probably work all day and get their good flowers and bring them on in. They're not going to find them. Go in the back. Home, steal them. That camera. What is that camera that people have now? You just make sure you get out of range of that right. kind of thing. Right, 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 right. And bring the flowers home, put them in the house. I mean, you know, it, it makes a difference and people appreciate just that tiny bit of effort that you put in. I mean, they they honestly feel it. No, I, I absolutely hear you. And I think that's it. It's like finding those little moments, to, you know, to make every day just as special. Like, why are we waiting for New Year's Day or New Year's Eve, like you said? Like, why are we waiting for these moments? Get the flowers, pull out the china, make a spritz. We're doing it anyway, so we might and as well make it out. nice. And invite your friends over. Don't be nervous. Like, I know so many people that have million dollar homes that are decorated yeah. beyond you, anything that we could imagine ever having. And they are terrified to have people in their house. Right. And it blows, oh, I ain't lying to you. It blows my mind. Because mm -hmm. look, if these are your 
your friends, they're coming over. They're not, they're not judging you. They're not there to say, oh my God, did you see that guest towel? It was wrinkled in the bathroom. <laughs> because she did not fluff that pillow. And I swear I saw a dust bunny under that settee. I yeah. Mean, that's not happening. I mean, and if they are doing that, well, guess what? Then their asses don't get invited back. Amen. You know? That's on God right there. <laughs> if you invite the ones that you love over. And I mean, it's different than just meeting in a restaurant. And yes, that's fun and that's great. And we appreciate that. But when you think about it, when's the last time you were invited to somebody's house? You weren't worried about what they served. You were, you were I mean, as long as they had no, something to drink. At this, now, at if they don't have anything to drink then, 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 then I can't be friends with them. I'm out. But as long as they had something good to drink, right. I mean, and just good friends. Yeah. No, I 100% I, I agree. And I think too, again, like it's just having this simple moment and, and I'm in this interesting time now where it's like, I'm an entertainer in my day to day, right? So I'm always like, uh, yeah, you know, girl, I, I dabble. <laughs> I dabble in the arts, if you will. But it's so interesting because I think, sorry, go ahead. I'm a dabbler. I just dabble in the arts a little I bit. I dabble in a little dip sand in the arts. Um, <laughs> but it's interesting too, now having this home, it's like, I want, when I come over, like when I, when I have people over, I want them to be like, this is the most fun place to be. I don't want to go out. I want people to come to my house, sit on my screen and porch, listen to the river, turn on some music, turn the Sonos up to a decibel that maybe my neighbors are like, we may call, but we also kind of want to just go over there and, and join in, you know? So you get that HOH position and that one is the homeowners association. You can turn it up as loud as you want. Who are they going to give? Who, I mean, you're giving the tickets. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, Heather, I'm all behind this. I know yeah. you're a little twix and tween on that, which mm -hmm. means I'm a little in, in between. A little twix yeah. and tween on it. But I'm telling you, this is what you need to do because then you have heart power to act however in the hell you want to up in that neighborhood. Listen, we're trying to we're trying to paint this house. It's like a light print pink brick with like beautiful like wood siding. But I'm trying to paint the house, whole house white brick with black. And I'm telling you, the guy who's running the HOA right now is a pain in everyone's ass. I was like, we're gonna do it. And then I said that my mom, when he comes over to like write us a ticket or like you know bitch and complain, I'm at my mom walk to the mailbox with no pants on, and we'll just be like, she, she, Robin, Robin didn't tell me she's lost it. You Robin know what I mean? Half naked, Robin, half naked. Throw him off and he won't see it coming. Yeah. Just say, look, you talk to Robin. She's out there butt naked. Her butt cheeks are hanging out. You know, I mean, you deal with this. And if you, right. can, you can tell her something, because I've been trying to tell her. I've been trying to tell her. We had no idea. Just play, you know, don't ever ask for forget or what is it? Don't ask for per permission. Just ask, for, to ask for forgiveness every day. I live my life yeah. like that. I mean, it is horrible. And it's, and you know, the thing is, is that, and I did, I got it from my father. I mean, he literally breaks every rule. Yeah. Every rule he breaks. It's just, you know, I mean, rules are sort of just kind of fluid with him, you know? Right, 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 right. And I mean, you know, but I mean, I feel the same way, 100%. Now I have a question when it comes to specific hosting. If you're like, okay, Heather, these are the, like the, the five staples of things you should always have in your fridge. Like, you know, no matter what, if you have these five staples in your fridge, you can whip up anything. So you're going to have to have a good cracker. Now I'm, I'm real funny about my crackers. I mean, yeah. I, don't want, I mean, I love a Ritz cracker. I'm not going to lie, but they are trashy. Mm -hmm. So you need a good cracker. You know, one of those nights, like I had a... But, Something with a little like tea salt got on. a bunch of good crackers out there. So right. for a good cracker, you need some pimento cheese. You're right. Charcuterie. Stuff that you can just, some olives. Yeah, love olives. Some almonds. Mm -hmm. I mean, like that, that's a party right there. You know, I mean, and you've got to have good wine. I keep going back to the bar. I mean, the bar yeah. is the deal. If you've got good alcohol, nobody's going to say a damn word to you. And they're going to have the best time. Listen, I, you know, I love a finger food. That's why I love a cheese plate. You know, if you have yeah, good so, food, yeah. So, do you remember the charcuterie? You probably don't because you were a little busy at the, that we made for y'all at, um, at the Mint event. Remember uh, that? Yes, it was insane. I did that. I was up there working my butt off in my outfit with my makeup and my eyelashes on, making sure that that was perfect for you. Oh, you're an angel. And you were grateful. You were grateful, and I appreciate that. But listen, I, I mean, any time anybody feeds me. And then, you know, a couple of sweets or just even some chocolate. Mm -hmm. Chocolate keeps, keep some nice chocolates, throw those out. And and that's it. It's not yeah. about, I mean, yes, I am selling a cookbook. So I should right. be here telling you that it really is about the recipes. Right, right, right. Uh, every, I don't know how this just went so south because I <laughs> Here, Heather, I have yeah. three girls, okay? Yeah. Three beautiful girls. 
one of them is graduating from college, one of them is in college, and one of them is headed to college to Ole Miss next year. Do you understand how poor I am? You know, <laughs> I got to sell this book. Do you understand me? And that's why. <laughs> that's why you, you hired me. Come on there over. It there it is. Yes. Come on over, y'all. So, I mean, seriously, the other day I was, I walked out and I had on some cheap Walmart tennis shoes. And yeah. Lucy looks at me and she goes, like, I mean, seriously, is that what you're going to wear? And I said, yeah, Alicia, I'm sorry. I can't afford golden goose like you can. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? They got like 15 pairs of golden goose and I'm wearing Walmart, you know? I mean, Listen. this is what I'm dealing with. They like expensive shoes and we've got to sell this book. We're going to sell the book. Listen, I hear you. Uh, listen, I told you earlier, I'm new money. There's new money and old money. But listen, I'm just glad to have any money. That's and I just bought my first pair of golden gooses. And I, I got swindled the youth. They told me, they're like, you got to have them, got to have them. Well, I finally had to look myself dead in the eyes the other day in the mirror. And I was like, my feet are too fat for these. So I literally took them to a cobbler. And I go, how much can you stretch these shoes out? And he was like, why did you spend this money on these shoes? I was like, I'm trying to keep up. I'm trying to keep up. He was like, yeah, they're adorable i'm trying to be damn adorable is what i'm trying to do i know but that's the deal though but yeah. honestly, and that's the great thing about this book and i am going to go back to it because i do believe in this firmly the recipes are easy yeah i want you to entertain and i know that when you have people over there's a lot of it's intimidating and yeah. you know i i want easy recipes that are super direct that you're going to have huge success with because i know you've got to be fluffing pillows you, you need to get the cobwebs off the front door. When right. You've got a lot of things going on. You need to make sure that, you know, all these things are done. So you're going to make your food ahead of time so that when your guests get there, you're not frazzled. You're not sweating. You're and not you can engage them and have like a, like, you know, catch up with like people you haven't seen and like have a meaningful like engagement with them. I love that. Yeah. Because if you're in the kitchen, nobody's going to have fun. If you're in the kitchen working, right. sweating and cussing, people are going to be a little uncomfortable. I mean, have you ever, have you been to somebody's house that was a nervous entertainer? Yes, have I have a girlfriend. I love her. I won't call her out on camera, but it's like, she invites us over and, I, and I, it's gotten to the point in my like mutual group of girlfriends. We're like, why are we going to her house? Cause it's just, it's stress. You feel like you it's can't sit down. Miserable. Yeah. Miserable. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you want to just like, okay, you're going to need more. Oh God, look, okay, you need more. Don't water. worry. I'm, I got my rosé. Okay, good. But yeah. I mean, I'm serious, Heather. It's like, yeah. I mean, are you kidding me? You feel so uncomfortable. It's like, okay, hold on. Somebody put a Valium in her drink, please. Right, right, right. If I have to stay here for five more right. minutes. Right, right. And, that and that's what we don't want. And I've been there and I've done it. Luke, my husband used to call it party mode. I would get yep. in party mode where I would be literally in a cocktail dress. Yep. Head in the fireplace, rearranging lava rocks yep. five minutes before guests got there for the Christmas party. Okay. Jeff doesn't I'm understand not that. Nobody wants to see my butt uh, in the damn fireplace rearranged as they walk in the door. I mean, it doesn't even matter. I mean, I wanted Luke to be putting sod outside. Right. In the driveway. I'm like, where's the sod? Put the sod. It's like, Elizabeth, it's, it's 10 minutes before I, go get that damn sod. You go get the sod. You know, and he's like, and men don't understand that because Jeff now is starting to realize that, like, I, that's what I do. I freak out. I'm, I'm chasing the dog. I'm like, oh, the candles need to be lit. The lighting needs to be low. Like, it's all about, yeah, because it is a mess. Spray. Where's the spray? Spray the spray. Get the guest towels out. Run that pillows. And then that. You know, and I was about to say something, but I, I don't want to be cussing too bad, but yeah. that man of yours yeah. goes into the bathroom, mm -hmm. oh. uses the good soap, yeah. and lathers up with it, and then he takes his thing on pan yeah. and brings them out on your monogram towel. Don't even start with me. Don't, even, don't start. even start with me. They're horrible humans, and while we're married to them, I don't even know, and I'm sorry that you got caught in the trap and you're brand new <laughs> But it's not gonna get any better. So my 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 I mean honestly, you take yeah. take the towels, don't put them out until three seconds for the guest rock because Jeff will mess them up. That's a really good idea. And I feel like I'm going to start making, so I, I, I'm i entertaining some very like she, she guests from LA this weekend. And oh, I'm do so I need to come over? Oh, yeah, I can, yeah. I can them. No, literally, I need you, get, like, I need you to come over because I'm starting to get nervous. I want to show them I, real southern hospitality, but I, I'm like, I know Jeff, Jeff will eat. I have to like send him to play golf because if I make even one of your recipes, he's going to eat it all before the guests get here. And I'm like, oh. Oh, and I mean, I mean, just like hovering over it like yeah. this. I mean, so we've got fried chicken and champagne. 
I literally it was like Luke. I mean, Luke would be like, no. Oh, <laughs> you know, I'm like, no. Yeah. That, all, that is for the guests. Yeah. So, you know, I, I would invite him, tell him the wrong time. He can come an hour later after everybody's had a few drinks and then he can walk in the door. That's a good idea. That's my best advice for you on this. So I like, are you going to cook or is your mom going to cook? Or are you going to order out? What are you going to do? Well, here's the thing, because Mother's Day weekend, too, I said we can't go out because it's going to be, like, crazy. So I think we're, we're going to order in a few things, but I think now that I have your cookbook, I'm just going to make a bunch of it. Uh, yeah. do this, and yep. you're going to do the charcuterie. Yeah. Some deviled eggs. Wait, what I want to do the cornbread salad, because I feel like that's, like, that's, like, a very Southern staple. But are you going to do a meal, or are you doing, like, are you doing supper for them? No, I want to do like nauseous. You know what I mean? I want a little this, okay, a little and the that. Cornbread salad's not going to work. No, no okay. that, that is like a, that's like to go with a barbecue. No, ma'am. Okay. Okay. You're going to do this. You're going to do what else? Um, oh God. You're going to do deviled eggs. Yeah. I need mean, my book. Um, Hold on. I'm flipping. I, I'm going to do the sparklers, obviously. Also, can I just say something? I love the Delta days. Oh, 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 oh. I know what you're going to do. What? Okay. Do you understand me? And this, this will, they will never, ever forget you. It's okay. tacky meatballs. It's the easiest yes. thing in the entire world. Okay. So you can go to the freezer section at the Kroger. I don't know what y'all have. It. Yeah, yeah. That, that's great. Yeah, Publix or Kroger. Go to the freezer section. You're going to buy the meatballs that are already done in a bag. And I know that's really going to upset your whole Italian heritage, but I'm just telling you, just oh. do it. Don't question it. Then you're going to go over to the um, jelly, jelly section. You're going to get a thing of grape jelly. Okay. Then you're going to get a thing of chili sauce, which is going to be in the ketchup section. It's like kind of like a souped up, kick, kicked up ketchup. Hi, okay. chili sauce. You're going to mix those two things together. Jelly and chili sauce. You're going to put the meatballs in the crock pot. You're going to turn, you're going to put the sauce on top of it, and you're going to leave it for four hours. And when I tell you something, LA ain't leaving. LA, I, I don't even know what you're gonna do because LA is moving in your house and they're gonna want the meatballs the next day. They're tacky as hell. Like it doesn't get any tackier. And that's what they're called, tacky meatballs. They couldn't be any tackier. But when I tell you, they're gonna lose their mind. You get you some toothpicks, or if you wanna be real fancy, go find some of those little bamboo picks with the, you yeah. know what I'm talking about. With the swirl on top. Yeah, do that, do the twirl picks, do the twirl picks. I mean, they are going to be like, oh my God, she's got the twirl pick. Right, right. And and that's it. At done. I'm telling so, you, done. I mean, that sounds insane. So, okay. So the meatballs from the freezer, I get so great chili, I get the chili sauce and I put it in the crock pot for four hours. Yes. So that's, that's tacky meatballs. You're going to do the charcuterie. You're going to add the artichoke hearts. All right. So then, um... And then question, how do I plate the artichoke? When they come out of the microwave, am I just putting them on, like, does everybody get an individual artichoke or what's the, like, the no, serving? No, 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 no. Okay. So This is going to be sitting on, so let's think salami. Um, we've got prosciutto. We've got beautiful yeah. cheeses. And you just sit this fine thing right down in the middle of it. And then oh. after it becomes room temperature, it's still fine. Put a little bowl on the side like Miss Mayor's taught you. For yes, ma'am. Except for these. Okay. Yeah. All right, on my damn jacket. Anyway, um, <laughs> that I borrowed that now has cheese on it. Yeah, um, yep. anyway, So you put put those down, and that's it. So it's just it's going to be in your beautiful charcuterie spread. Actually, okay. I don't have to come to Atlanta because I'm so controlling and I'm stressed out right now for you. So is this Saturday night? What night is it? I mean, I've yeah, got I'm gonna, I'm gonna need tomorrow. you come Saturday night. Amanda can get me there on her plane, so you just tell me when. Right. Yeah. I would really, I need that. I need your help because I too, like, it's the funny thing is too, you know, I'm from Georgia. And I can just see you running around that house. I mean, when you get LA in town, I would lose my mind if I had LA coming. No. And that's, but, and I don't, I'm like, and I'm, I'm, I think I'm a good host, but I've, I've literally, I am new to like really cooking and in the kitchen. And it's, I mean, I can make a mean whiskey sour, but I'm new to everything else. That's why I'm telling you, we're going to do stuff that you can do ahead of time. So it's okay. Already done okay okay and then, you know i mean this is the thing though honestly i promise you because i get it i mean la comes in town but you need to understand that la is gonna love the south you're right anything i mean it's i always tell debbie my fabulous producer at the today show because mm -hmm. they just think oh my god i mean they think that i am just this rare jewel of an oddity and i'm like yeah. if all ever came down here you would realize that i'm a dime a dozen so i won't let them come down like no 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 y'all just no yankees stay in new york 
Yep. Do not come down here, you know, because they, they will figure it all out. But I'm, there's like a thousand of me at the Kroger, <laughs> you know, but they think that I'm super special. And I promise you, you bring LA to Atlanta, mm-hmm. you get some damn, you, excuse me, you get some fried chicken, mm-hmm. some champagne, charcuterie, and those khaki meatballs. And you call me on Sunday when they're still in your house. And then it's going to be Thursday, Thursday, LA is still going to be there. And you're going to be like, oh my God, Elizabeth, they're still here. They're still here. They won't leave. They need me out of house. No. More meatballs. Yeah. I mean, and I'm like, well, I told you that, you know, they're going to be happy, but they're going to be real happy. And they ain't going home. You're right. You're right. We got, uh, Caitlin, uh, are you kicking us out? No, I don't want to, but I just know that like Elizabeth's got a big night. I hate to interrupt, uh, but now I feel like I need to like maybe make a recipe or two because I'm very hungry now after hearing yeah. all the food. Um, but Elizabeth, we are so proud of you. This book is wonderful and it is exactly what I feel like all of our readers need now that everyone's getting their shot and we all finally get to come together. So this is like kind of that's it. Come the on perfect. Over perfect book to kind of usher in this kind of return to to normal um so we do have signed copies i know everybody who's joining us tonight already has a signed copy on their way or it will be shortly um but if you need more i dropped um a link to buy extras uh, in the chat so please uh, don't be shy we have lots and lots and lots um elizabeth i know you might need to get going but i wanted to do um so if you need to scoop what can I tell oh. Heather to buy? I'm not? sorry. Can I, is Heather going? Heather, no, they're here. here. I love um, you. Honey, I am, um, you will never know, and I'm about to start crying, how grateful I am for this. I know how busy you oh. are. I know. No, they, listen, you thank you for thinking of me. You're a doll. And listen, we're going to sell the shit out of this because you got to put a kid, kid through college. <laughs> I, mean, I got no, I got to buy them expensive freaking shoes is what I've got to do. I love That's you. Good. And I'm grateful beyond measure for you. You have no idea. I love you too. And thank you for keeping us well fed. Love you, Angel. Love you. So while they go away, we're going to do the the raffle to see who wins the chef dinner. Y'all are welcome to stick around if you like. Um, But if you need to go ahead and scoot, that's fine too. All right. So let me just share my screen. Thanks everybody for bearing with me. Okay. All right. So here we go. All right, who's it gonna be? Let's see. Chris, all right, congratulations, Chris. We will be in touch with you um, the next day or so and uh, put you in touch with Elizabeth about arranging that. Um, Y'all are all so, so wonderful. I think you're really gonna enjoy this book and thank you again for your support of St. Jude and uh, Elizabeth and and of course, Square Books. Um, Everybody have a wonderful evening and uh, take care. All right, bye.